Special meeting of the Liquor Control Commission is now called order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang. Here. Commissioner Vogel. Here. Commissioner Here. Here. Commissioner Ageris. Here. Commissioner Brady. Here. Commissioner Hine. Here. Chairperson Averscato. Here. Approval of the minutes of the special meeting of March 18th. So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Ageris, second by Commissioner Brady. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Commissioner Vogel. Yes. Commissioner Here. Yes. Commissioner Ageris. Yes. Commissioner Brady. Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Averscato? Yes. Approval of the minutes of the special meeting of April 1st? So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Hine, second by Commissioner Lang. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Here? Yes. Commissioner Argeris? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Averscato? Yes. Okay. Annual review of the liquor licenses 2013 to 2014. Renewal. Hmm? Renewal. Oh, renewal. I'm sorry. Um, A1 Liquors, Andy's Dam Inn, B&L Liquors and P.S. Pub, Benny Hanna's, Bob Chin's Crab House, Boca de Beppo, I can't say this one, Carnicerias Jimenez, Chipotle's Mexican Grill, Cooper Hawk, D'Agostino's Pizzeria, Golden Chef, I am Siam Incorporated, Jazz Cafe Incorporated, Jeffrey Lane's, Kilcoin's Redwood Inn, Christina's Market, Las Islas Marias, Liquor Barn, Liquor Island, Market Square, Mom and Dad Pantry, Old Munich Inn, Pete Miller's Steakhouse, Philip Carpenter's Post 66 Ambets, The Ram Restaurant and Brewery, Sam's Club Store Number 8198, Serenello's. St. Joseph the Worker doing business as Knights of Columbus, Stella's Sushi Gallery, Taqueria Al Alamo, TGI Fridays, Tremonto Steak and Seafood, Tuscany, Twin Peaks, Walgreens Store number 04941, Walgreens Store number 05609, Wapagetti's, Walmart Store number 1735, The Western North Shore Hotel, Wheeling Liquors, XO Restaurant. Mr. Fondilis. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> applications have been substantially completed, uh, background checks completed, and payment of all fees turned in for all of these restaurants. We ask there be three conditions applied to a motion, those being submittal of a renewal application materials complete and in good order, two, full payment of all applicable fees, and three, satisfactory background check results for all responsible individuals. Further, we ask for two motions, um, a motion to cover all of the um, businesses listed and mentioned prior with the exception of St. Joseph the Worker. We can do that uh, so that two of our commissioners can vote on the group and then recuse themselves from St. Joseph the Worker as they are officers of that entity. So move with the conditions. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Adiris, second by Commissioner Here. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Here? Yes. Commissioner Adiris? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Averscato? Yes. And then for St. Joseph, the worker doing business as Knights of Columbus. With the same conditions. With the yes. same conditions. So moved. Second. Motion made by uh, Commissioner Adjira, second by Commissioner Lang. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Abstain. Commissioner Here? Yes. Commissioner Adjira? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Abstain. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Averscato? Yes. Do I have a motion? So moved. To adjourn. Motion made by Commissioner Brady. Second. Second by Commissioner Lang. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Commissioner Volgo. Yes. Commissioner Here. Yes. Commissioner Argeris. Yes. Commissioner Brady. Yes. Commissioner Hine. Yes. Chairperson Averscato. Yes.
The Wheeling Special Meeting is now called order. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Here. Trustee Vogel. Here. Trustee Hare. Here. Trustee Argeris. Here. Trustee Brady. Here. Trustee Hine. Here. President Avascado. Here. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on April 1st. So moved. Motion made by Trustee Adiris. Second. Second by Trustee Hine. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Hare. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Avascado. Yes. Mr. Fondilis, any changes to the agenda? No, ma'am. Be there no changes to the agenda. We have proclamations. National Volunteer Week, April 21st through the 27th, 2013. The entire community can inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take action that changes the world. Volunteers can connect with local community service opportunities through hundreds of community service organizations. Individuals and communities are at the center of social changes, discovering their power to make a difference. During this week, all over the nation, service projects will be performed and performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service. The giving of oneself in service to another empowers the giver and the recipient. Experience teaches us that government by itself cannot solve all of our nation's social problems. Our country's volunteer force of over 63 million is a great treasure. Volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive nation. Judy Abrascato, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim April 21st through the 27th of 2013 as National Volunteer Week in the Village of Wheeling and urges fellow citizens to volunteer in their respective communities since by volunteering and recognizing those who serve, we can replace disconnection with understanding and compassion. <coughs> we will read to you the volunteers. So you'll have to be just a little, little longer tonight. Starting off with, and if I don't do the names right, I apologize. I might have to do just your first name. I have the Board of Health. Uh, if the Board of Health would stand, Sandra, Skip, Dana, <coughs> Pat, <coughs> Arthur, Valerie, and Ellen, if you would stand from the, and we see we have, the Ellen. chairman is here. Thank you very much. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> Board of Fire and Police Commissioners, Al Hem, Lou Kolsak, Mike Moran, Michael Murphy, and Al Palicki, if you would stand. Plan Commission, Mike Burns, Pam Dorban, Don Johnson, Steve Powers, Jim Raffato, Norm Schaff, and Terry Skyden. If all of you would stand, please. <laughs> Senior Commission, Martha Cross, Georgia Delina, Delaney, Judith Edelstein, Carol Festenstein, and Pat Mazarka, if you would stand from the senior committee. <laughs> now comes the challenge. <clears throat> the Senior Center Volunteers. Nicole. Lee. Kathy. Joel, Bill, and it's nice to see there's not a double of names here, so I can really, really do it well. I hate to say your last name, and I'll ruin it. Linda, Jerry, Doris, Susan, Fritz, Bill, Martha, Ed, Georgia, Barbara, Renee, John, Judith, Flo, Merle, Carrie, Tom, Kim, Barbara, Joyce, Thomas, Zalaka, Kathleen, Eileen, Harley, <coughs> Marilyn, Estelle, 
George, Matt, Ruth, Denise, Gloria, Ann, Young. Want to handle? Want to deal that with me? Eugenie. Eugenie, Blanche, Gerald, Marianne, Ioana, Pat, Pat Miller, Penny, Ida Nelson, Jean, Mary, Nikki, Gina, Kathy, Rick, Gary, Joanne, Rich, Steve, Bonnie, Elsa, Cindy, Bobby, Jack, Roberta, Ed, Michael, Fred, Pinky, Kim, and Lumana. Now, we'll go on further. Would all of you stand? Thank you. And for the last, because we're not there yet, right? No, we are. Board of Health volunteers would be Judith Edelstein, Martha Cross, Pat Mazarka, Ed Delaney, Georgia Delaney, Estelle Heber, George Heber. Would you please stand? Police Department volunteers, Debbie, Ellen Barnes, Frank and Linda Brissett, Betty Gambrone, Ruth Lance, Carol, Linda, and Sue Stein. Would you please stand? <laughs> Citizens Patrol. Ellen, Kathy, Steve, Frank, Linda, Carrie, Marta, Linda, Tom, Ronald, Carol, Sadie, Don, <coughs> Gilder, Kenneth, Michael, Carol, Ann, Ricky, Elanda, Ralph, Chuck, Faye, Chuck McGee, Des Moines, Roberto, Sandy, Patty, Steve, Rob, John, Cindy, Hernan, Bill, and Marie Wildruff. Would you all stand? So as you can see, I might have not said your last name, and I apologize. That's the same thing that happens to me. They say Abra, Abra. So I hope that you're not insulted that I did not say your last name because you are very much appreciated. The village could not go forward or do what we do if we did not have you to volunteer. We have the health that worries about us being in good shape and have good health projection. We have the board and fire of police to make sure we get only the best in our police and our fire department. Our plan commission, they make sure that the plans are in shape, that the plans are correct, and we have the best that there is to give to the people in the village of Wheeling. Our senior commission works hard to make sure that everybody knows what the village has to offer to the seniors and what the seniors can do for them. And the senior center volunteers, how would you even be able to, Sherry, run without all of these volunteers? It's phenomenal. So I myself personally, as this will be my last saying tonight, I should say for this, and our Board of Health volunteers, that I personally thank you. It's been a pleasure. You've done so much, and we appreciate it. Thank you.
And when we have a break, which we're having tonight, the certificates are outside under the pictures so that you all may take home your certificate of appreciation for all that you have done. And don't forget, even if someone doesn't tell you every day how wonderful you are, you are wonderful. And I'm sure when you get up in the morning, you go out to do that job of helping at the senior center or choosing a police and fire or making plans for our plan commissioners, that you know that you're doing it for the good of where you live to make your town one of the best in this Northwest suburbs. Okay. Yes. Okay, the next one is Arbor Day, April 26, 2013. In 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. This holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Whereas trees can reduce erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. Trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. Trees in our city increase property values, enhance the econ economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Judy Abrascato, president of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim April 26, 2013 as Arbor Day and urges all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. Ms. Hazelwood? I'll tell you a little story. When Lori first came to the village, my husband was a and others, they met, and that was the end of that. We knew that we had the best because he said, how lucky are you, and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, President Abrascato, Clerk Sis Simpson, and Board of Trustees. Arbor Day is a nationally celebrated observance on the last Friday of April. It encourages the planting of trees and tree care. This year's Arbor Day will be held on April 26, Friday at 10 o'clock at Walt Whitman School, 133 Willie Avenue. The celebration will include informing the students about the history of Arbor Day and planting an autumn blaze for Monty Maple. The celebration of Arbor Day represents a priceless opportunity for wheeling citizens to take a positive action and plant trees. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Yes. Older American Month 2013, May 2013. Wheeling is home to a substantial number of citizens age 60 and above. The Village of Wheeling is committed to valuing all individuals and recognizing their ongoing life achievements. The older adults in Wheeling play an important role by continuing to contribute experience, knowledge, wisdom, and accomplishments. Our older adults are active community members involved in volunteering, mentorship, arts and culture, and civic engagement. Recognizing the success of community elders encourages their ongoing participation and further accomplishments. Our community can provide opportunities to allow older citizens to continue by, to flourish by emphasizing the importance of elders and their leadership by publicly recognizing their continued achievements. Presenting opportunities for older Americans to share their wisdom, experience, and skills. Recognizing older adults as a valuable asset in strengthening American communities. Judy Abrascato, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim May 2013. 2013 to be Older Americans Month and urges every citizen to take time this month to recognize older adults and the people who serve and support them as powerful and vital citizens who greatly contribute to the community. Ms. Herza. I'm proud to be one of those older Americans. Amen. And thank you <laughs> for all you do.
Building Safety Month 2013 and May 2013. Through our state's continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, and resilience in the building environment that affect our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster, gives us confidence that our structures are safe and sound. Our confidence is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year-round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. These guardians, dedicated members of the International Code Council, use a governmental consensus process that brings together local, state, and federal officials with expertise in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality code to protect Americans in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, and play. The International Codes, the most widely adopted building safety, energy, and fire prevention codes in the nation, are used by most U.S. cities, counties, and states. These modern building codes are also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes, snowstorms, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, and earthquakes. Building Safety Month, sponsored by the International Code Council, reminds the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials who assure, who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings. Building Safety Month, code officials keep you safe. The theme for Building Safety Month 2013 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safety. Green and resist resilient building, pool, spa, and hot tub safety, backyard safety, and new technologies in the construction industry. Building Safety Month 2013 encourages appropriate steps everyone can take to ensure that the places where we live, learn, work, worship, and play are safe and sustainable and recognizes that count, countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state in, agencies. It is hereby proclaimed that May 1st through May 31st, 2013 is Building Safety Month in Wheeling, and all citizens and civic organizations are encouraged to acknowledge the local building safety and fire prevention officials and the important role that they play in public safety. Mr. Janney, when you have a problem, He'll take care of it. <laughs> Mr. Jan, thank you. Yes. Silver Star Banner Day, May 1st, 2013. The Village of Wheeling always honors the sacrifice of the men and women in the armed forces. The Silver Star Families of America was formed to make sure we remember the blood sacrifice of our wounded and ill by designing and manufacturing a Silver Star banner and flag. To date, the Silver Star Families of America has freely given thousands of Silver Star banners to the wounded, wounded and their families. The members of the Silver Star Families of America have worked tirelessly to provide the wounded of this county with Silver Star banners, flags, and care packages. The Silver Star Families of America's sole mission is that every time someone sees a Silver Star banner in a window or a Silver Star flag flying, people remember the sacrifices made for this village, state, and nation. The Board of Trustees of the Village of Willing wishes that the sacrifice of so many in our American forces never be forgotten. Judy Abrascato, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim the Village's appreciation for the Silver Star Families of America and honors their commitment to our wounded and hereby declares May 1st as Silver Star Banner Day, the permanent and official day to honor the wounded and ill members of the armed forces. May we never forget what people have done for us to give us this country. May we also remember what happened in Boston. And may we honor all of those police, all those firemen, and all those people that work so diligently to make sure that we find and have peace and that we can have a good place to live. Okay. White, Ti White Tiger Martial Arts Center. The White Tiger Martial Arts Center at 286 West Palatine Road has been a significant feature of the Willing community since it opened in 2006 under the direction of Headmaster Sheik Lee. Headmaster Lee and the White Tiger Martial Arts Center make a valued contribution to Wheeling and its neighboring communities through their promotion of physical fitness, self-confidence, and self-discipline. On Saturday, March 16, 2013, 
38 of Headmaster Lee students won a total of 36 medals at the Illinois State Taekwondo Championship held in Ottawa, Illinois. Because the Illinois State Taekwondo Championship is sanctioned by U.S. Taekwondo, the governing body for the sport of Taekwondo in the United States, earning a medal at the championship is recognized by the United States Olympic Committee as qualifying the medalist to, complete, to compete in the United States Junior Olympics. All of the medalists from the White Tiger Martial Arts Center will now be able to compete in the Junior Olympics, which will be held in Chicago from July 3rd through July 9th. The success of the students at the White Tiger Martial Arts Center at the Illinois State Taekwondo Championship is something in which all members of the Wheeling community can rightfully take pride. Judy Abiscato, president of the Village of Wheeling in the counties of Cook and Lake, does hereby congratulate Headmaster Lee and his students for their successes, wishes them luck at the Junior Olympics in July, and calls upon the residents of Wheeling to join in recognizing their impressive achievements. Yeah, my emotion like, looks like uh, so sensitive. Yeah, almost I'm crying now. <laughs> uh, I would you like to say first to uh, President Judy, she invited a lot uh, to Life Force Parade. Uh, you remember? Yeah. I remember. And also I, can, I would like to say for when I started seven years ago, I chose the uh, studio here, Palatine and uh, uh, Willing Road. And a special permit I needed is so difficult for me, but willing uh, president and also willing staff to help me, I could uh, make a school. Right now, we call the number one Illinois martial arts school. We have around 600 students, Taekwondo and Krav Maga, not all people, they enjoy it, White Tiger. And I'm so would like to say my students, you know, I'm so honest to them. And you know, my student, 38 people went to state championship, and then more 95% they got a medals. Yeah, I think sometimes, Messalius, yeah. <laughs> Finally, thank you so much again. And thank you. I'm just a seven year, only focused, developed my school. But now I'm a little bit more comfortable. I'm maybe really more thinking about outside and helping community service and, you know, I go to public school, I teaching how to safety your kids and I will more, uh, you know, some community service, I promise you. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to see <coughs> what we have and sometimes we forget. We have so many people helping our youth of today and that's where it comes from. Volunteer, you volunteer, that gentleman volunteers and makes sure that he has the best. At this time, we will take a 25 minute break. So I hope that you will all enjoy Coffee in, pick up your certificates, and we hope that some of you will stay for the rest of our meeting.
regular meeting. That ship is Citizens, concerns, and comments? There are none, Madam President. Thank you. Staff report. Thank you, Madam President. I have uh, two items this evening. The first, I am very happy to announce that we have a new economic development director. His name is John Milanofi. He comes with a uh, number of years of public and private sector experience. John, if you'd say a few words of introduction. Thank you very much, John. Uh, as you said, I'm John Milanofi. I've spent 20 years at Milanofi & Associates, a real estate consulting firm where I participated in numerous real estate development projects throughout the country, including uh, Mall of America in Minneapolis and Navy Pier in Chicago and Easton Town yep. Center in Columbus, Ohio, among many others. Uh, I then spent three years at Mid-America Development Partners. Uh, we were involved with the Weston Hotel in Wheeling, Intercontinental Hotel in Rosemont, and several others. Unfortunately, the recession wasn't kind to our company. In 2008, the world changed, and uh, I transitioned into government and economic development. I spent the last couple of years at the uh, Village of Arlington Heights, working with uh, Mayor Mulder, and uh, as the business and development coordinator. But I'm just delighted uh, to accept this opportunity the village of Wheeling. Um, I was fortunate enough to attract over 300,000 square feet of new stores, restaurants, and industry to Arlington Heights. And I'm going to roll up my sleeves and work hard in the village of Wheeling. Thank you very much, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Welcome. My second item tonight, Madam President, uh, deals with something that uh, most communities in our area have been dealing with over the last uh, few days. Um, as you all, I'm sure, have experienced, the village has been dealing with and continues to deal with the significant amount of rainfall that came over Wednesday and Thursday of last week. In fact, the village, um, unfortunately, received just under six inches of rain during that period. Uh, I have a couple of statistics, and then we'll give a little bit of update on where we are. Um, to date, we have spent over 108 hours of pumping on public streets, which equates to approximately 73 million gallons of water pumped off of public streets. Approximately 15,000 sandbags were filled, which equals 113 tons of sand. 100, we, the village, the, I'm sorry, the Department of Public Works received approximately 125 flood-related calls with over 70 work orders generated uh, from the rains. We unfortunately had 35 homes affected by flooding streets, mostly in the Meadowbrook area, 14 homes affected by floodwaters at the crossing of Wolf and Sunrise, 43 mobile homes affected by the Des Plaines River, an additional 12 houses reported storm and sanitary sewer backups in their home. To date, 825 total man hours were spent on flooding. We continue to house just under 100 residents at the Wheeling Park District who were kind enough to open their building to us and the Red Cross and allow us to have a facility there, a shelter there that has been feeding and housing these residents who have been displaced by floodwaters since Wednesday evening. Uh, they will be there at the shelter uh, until at least uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday of this week as we wait for waters to recede and that is mostly affecting those who live in the Fox Point subdivision. Um, Earlier this evening, uh, we recognized a number of volunteer groups, and I would like to recognize uh, some people who are, are not always um, out in the public face, although they are always out in the public working, and that is our staff. We had a number of department heads and a number of our staff in various departments that canceled family vacations in order to man both the emergency operations center, which was open through yesterday morning, um, and worked, 20, worked in shifts covering 24 hours a day up until this morning. Uh, I can't say enough uh, words of praise for them and their efforts, all of our staff from answering phones to being on the front lines pumping water. Uh, as with the volunteers, uh, we could not function without their assistance. We could not function without the assistance from staff. So I am very happy and very proud of the work that they have done. 
Uh, all in all, I think the village of Wheeling has escaped. Um, certainly the, the more intense flooding that happened to our neighbors to the south, uh, that is certainly through a little bit of luck and an awful lot of effort on our part. We continue yearly to make improvements to our system and to our streets and our overland flowing situations in order to avoid these dramatic flooding events as best we can and I think our efforts over the past 10 years certainly have proven themselves over the last couple of days. Uh, with that I believe the uh, the village president would like to say a few words of her own. Thank you. <coughs> Yesterday uh, President-elect the Dearest and myself were at the Park District and you have no idea what a miraculous way everything is handled. Is that correct? Unbelievable. The Park District, Sherry, Angela, Miriam, the Red Cross, what they did for those people was just very heartwarming. And tonight, we did not recognize the care people. The care people are over there working tonight. They will be recognized by name on May 6th. That is why they were not in attendance this evening. So I thank you, Sherry, Angela, Miriam, the Red Cross, the Park District, the police and the fire. It was phenomenal. You wouldn't even know anything was going on there. Everybody was in their place. Everybody took their name. They, they brought the lunches, the Red Cross brought all kinds of uh, clothing. And it's really wonderful because you know what? That's what this village is about. We're a family. And the family's there to help each other. And if we don't help each other, we'll never be a family. So again, I thank you. Please let Angela know, Miriam know. And of course, the Park District goes without saying that they opened up the doors, changed their activities that they had, and have done a miraculous job. So myself, I appreciate that, and I'd like you to know that. And I'm sure the board would also like to say a thank you. We know that we have the best staff there is, and we know that this would not work unless the staff work together. So, I thank you. Can I just add one thing to that, if I may? Sure. Thanks. District 21, the teachers. The kids were in need, and the teachers came out and to take care of their kids. And I thought that was something that I saw, that they took their time on the weekend to come out to make sure their kids were OK. So, kudos to District 21 and the uh, teachers. They were great. Really and with nice. that, also, mm -hmm. if you her conversations, you know what the kids are interested in? Not going out to play, not to make all their little bracelets and all their right. necklaces. They wanted to know, are we going to get to go to school tomorrow? Right. That's what they were concerned about. So the teachings of the parents and the teachings of the help, and we again, thank you. We can't thank you probably enough, and thank you such a small word but it means a lot right from the heart. Thank you. Public Works Director, Mr. Stavros. Thank you, Madam President. On Saturday, May 11, 2013, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. only, rain or shine, the Village of Wheeling will be hosting a dual one-day electronics and document destruction collection event with the Solid Waste and, uh, Agency of Northern Cook County. The event will be held at Public Works, 77 West Tins Road. There is no cost to the residents to attend this event. For information on electronic items accepted and the amount of documents residents can bring to the event, or if you have any other questions, please contact Public Works directly, Christine Bezier at 847-279-6903. Thank you. Thank you. We have the consent agenda. 
All <coughs> consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. So moved. So motion made by Trustee Ajira, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Here. Yes. Trustee Argeris. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Arviscato. Yes. Item 13A, uh, new business, presentation regarding um, an overview of the Department of Finance. Mr. Fondelis. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this evening you will be hearing two presentations, one from, you can come up. One from the finance director and one from our community development director. Every year when we do the budget later on uh, in, the, in the year, um, we spend some time doing a department overview. A little bit about the responsibilities, a little bit about where taxpayer money is going. Uh, I thought it prudent to remove those overview sections of budget presentations and put them into workshop items like this as a formal presentation so that the residents and businesses of the community can concentrate on hearing and educating themselves about where their money is going and how we function. Uh, that way we'll also be able to spend more time when it comes to budget season talking about the finances of the department and keep the focus there. Uh, this new initiative I uh, thought we would do for each of the major departments on a quarterly basis. So every four months you will hear a new presentation from one of our major departments, starting tonight with finance, followed by community development. In addition, we're recording as we do with all meetings, but we will edit this evening's presentations and add them to the website under each particular department so that the public always has access to the explanation of what these departments do. And that can be very useful, uh, especially when we get into the technical side of the police and fire department, but certainly starting with our, our village finances, uh, a very good, I think, and useful thing. Again, this is not a presentation <coughs> on, in particular with the finance department, on the village's finances. It is about how the department of finance functions uh, in our community. So with that, I'll turn it over to Director Monschain, who will then hand it over to Community Development Director Janik. Thank you very much. I, I actually wanted to talk about finances tonight, but I was told to, to just focus on the department, so I'll do that. Um, some of you know that the finance department has eight employees. Um, we used to have nine in the last few years. We lost one position as a result of uh, the economy um, in 2008 and the downturn. And so we have eight positions now consisting of a finance clerk, a water billing and revenue collection coordinator, accounts payable and customer service coordinator, financial services coordinator, two accountants, the assistant director of finance, and myself. And I'd just like to say I'm very proud of all of the people that work for the finance department. Um, we don't have a lot of turnover in, in our department. In fact, put a note at the bottom there that we have 14 and a half years on average of experience working specifically for the village of Wheeling, and that doesn't include the experience that some of our employees have working for other communities as well. So um, we have very good people who have a lot of experience and, and do an excellent job for the village. And we're responsible for a lot of the things that you would probably assume that the finance department would uh, be in charge of, accounting and auditing, which includes not only the village's funds, but also the police and fire pension funds, uh, budgeting, water billing, liability insurance and workers' comp administration, TIF district administration, um, debt issuance, investing of village funds, plan administration for the village's health insurance plans, the real estate transfer certificate um, program, and of course we operate the front desk and answer uh, the phone calls that come into the village. We're also involved with respect to TIF districts in redevelopment agreement negotiation. That's something that we work with the village attorney on, the economic development director, 
uh, the developers themselves and our consultants to try to uh, formulate RDAs that protect the village's interest to the extent possible, but also um, create an incentive for the developer to uh, redevelop property in Wheeling. Um, we're involved in capital improvement planning, labor negotiations with the village's unions, and uh, police and fire pension fund accounting. Um, we work with the actuary. actuary. Uh, we do state reporting, um, and we work with the investment managers for the police and fire pension funds. Just a little overview of our budget. This would not be one of my presentations if there wasn't numbers involved. So just to give you an idea, our 2013 budget was um, 900, is $993,000. That's basically the same budget that we had five years ago. So there's really not been any growth in our department in terms of uh, expenditures over the last five years. And that's because, as I mentioned before, we reduced our staff level by one person. Um, as you've heard me talk about in the, in the past, the general fund overall um, consists of personnel expenditures that are usually between 75 and 80 percent of the general fund budget. In the finance department, it's closer to 90 percent, and that's because we really provide services for the rest of the departments of the village and for the residents as well. So we don't have much in the, in the way of equipment um, or uh, things like that. Most of our, our budget is personnel, and the remaining items are, are banking fees, the audit contract, the uh, actuarial services, computers, and memberships, and things like that. And a few years ago, village-wide, we started implementing performance measures. And we did that in the finance department, too, to measure our level of efficiency and effectiveness in terms of the services that we deliver. And so I just highlighted a few of them here. Um, Adjusting journal entries by the auditors, we try to limit those to fewer than five. Last year we had seven, so we have an opportunity for improvement there. Um, errors in processing payroll ch checks, we, we would like to have fewer than two, and last year we had zero. Um, and invoices processed within 30 days, our target is 95%. Last year we were at 100%. We also track several output measures just to give uh, the residents and the board an idea of, of what we produce. Um, in terms of water and sewer bills, in 2012, we, pro we sent out 46,203 water and sewer bills, an average of about 3,800 per month. And we also issued over 1,000 real estate transfer certificates. That has been a very successful program that has allowed the village to collect monies that are due to it over the years. Um, by having that program in place. And last year, we also issued over 2,600 accounts payable checks. And then finally, um, the, the finance department has been very lucky to receive um, the GFOA Distinguished Budget Award for 26 consecutive years, including fiscal year 2012, as well as the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for 32 consecutive years. So those are two awards that we're very proud of. We apply for every year. And uh, they allow us to uh, receive feedback from the reviewers and improve our budget document and our comprehensive annual financial report as well. So in brief, that is what the finance department is all about. And I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Mr. Janik. If anyone has any pull with the state, they can uh, use these statistics from our finance department to talk about 100% of our invoices paid within 30 days. I think if we could see 10% from the state, we'd be happy. Um, John, do you say I had 45 minutes for this presentation? Um, we'll up it to an hour. It's early. Okay. That'd be great. Four with questions five. at the end. <laughs> with, 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 with questions. Take your time. <laughs> Clock's running. It's a little humor. First, I'd like to say, um, my department, um, 
we we have 18 full-time people. Um, typically, we have uh, three seasonal people during the, during the summertime: uh, engineering and um, uh, code enforcement. Uh, but our, our department, um, we, we deal with all the other departments in the village. I'm not saying that uh, other departments don't deal with other ones, but um, given our six divisions, we, we deal a lot with uh, public works, police, social services, fire, and um, I just want to let, let you guys know that um, for what we do, um, we need them a, a lot and we depend on them a lot. Um, and it's, just, it's, it's good for my department because we do work with all the other departments. And I think that, um, that my people, um, they, they're proud of being able to work with all the other departments. Um, <clears throat> we have six divisions. Uh, as I said, we have 18 full-time people. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've got uh, planning, building, health, property maintenance, Capital projects, which uh, we just assumed within the past year, engineering and clerical. <coughs> Our department responsibilities um, are, are wide. Uh, you can read this off the list, but uh, we do all we do a lot of inspections. That's both health, building, uh, engineering projects, capital improvement projects. Uh, we do building permits, building licenses. Uh, Adjudication is relatively new. Um, as you probably know, that's a, a program we just recently started to uh, have people come to the village instead of going down to Cook County uh, for tickets and for citations. We do it here um, at the village. Uh, rental unit inspection and then uh, the clerical. Um, summary uh, relative to our budget. Um, our 2013 budget was just over $2 million. Um, majority of our budget is personnel. Uh, we do pay uh, consultants and um, need for software and surf funds are our other uh, main uh, costs. Uh, the consultants, um, as you know, in the past few years we've transferred uh, some of our full-time personnel and we started to go out and use consultants, for instance, for building and for engineering for a lot of our projects to save money. Uh, it's worked out uh, very well so far. Uh, performance measures, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, code violation resolution, and permit approval time. Um, we've so far been able to meet um, our goals for these uh, performance measures, um, met, uh, meet these goals, and uh, try to make as, as few uh, enemies as possible. Um, it's not always easy to do. It takes a lot of negotiation, but um, I think that we, we do have, we try to um, um, keep our keep the residents happy, keep the customers happy as well. Uh, <coughs> like I said, we, we're, we're the ones out there in the front line doing all the inspections and a lot of times it's not real easy. Um, this gives you an idea of, um, of our performance measures and output. A uh, number of building permits, over a thousand uh, engineering permits, uh, just over uh, 675 or business licenses, uh, rental licenses, health permits, FOIAs, uh, we've been getting more and more FOIAs every year. I think all the departments have been have been getting the same thing. Uh, these these take um, uh, more and more of our time. Unfortunately, um, it just seems that in the past few years there have been more and more people uh, questioning um, uh, government, our processes, and that sort of thing. Um, floodplain terminations and then planning and zoning dockets. <coughs> Inspection-wise, uh, we've we've been. Um, performing over um, 10,000 inspections per year over the past uh, four years. And as you can see, last year we had 11,611. Um, we, we do an incredible, incredible amount of, of field work, um, visiting uh, homes, visiting businesses, um, responding to complaints, uh, scheduled and un unscheduled. Um, our health department also does, um, and, and some of our uh, inspectors do things um, off the clock. Um, when we get involved in, in some other tricky situations relative to um, hoarding or uh, child endangerment issues. Fees collected. Uh, last year was a, was a good year for us. We collected over a million dollars in fees. Um, that's a little bit more than our normal um, amount of, of fees that we collect in a year. Uh, typically that number is more uh, between uh, 850000 and a million dollars. Uh, recent grants we've received include the Dundee Road um, pedestrian path 
and uh, monies for the active uh, transportation pa uh, plan that was recently completed. We've also uh, recently, uh, with the help of P uh, Public Works, applied for funding for street lights on Dundee Road and most recently on Wolf Road. And we're waiting to hear, um, to see how much funding we get for those uh, projects. Uh, we'll talk about the planning uh, division. We have uh, two full-time people in planning. Um, the planners uh, do all the, uh, the planning commission and board reports. Um, zoning and land use review, uh, permit reviews for signs, and they're often the, the first contact people we have for uh, whether it's uh, what, what the, the property is zoned at, what, the, what land use they can use, uh, people who are uh, developers or who are would-be developers asking questions about um, numerous things in our code. Uh, they also do uh, companies that plan updates and uh, obviously attend all the plan commission meetings. Uh, they also uh, deal with um, a lot of interagency or a lot of agencies outside the village. Uh, would be uh, Department of Transportation, the airport, Forest Preserve, other municipalities, uh, Metra, uh, on various projects. Um, we also do, we are involved with uh, Northwest Municipal Conference um, on, on various uh, topics, uh, planning related as well as development. Uh, they keep uh, track of property files and web updates for planning. Uh, the property files are, are incredibly important. Um, you know, we get questions all the time for research uh, on, uh, for people who are looking at a property. Maybe there was a development that was approved or not approved on a property five years ago. Uh, they're constantly coming to us um, for uh, information on property files. Uh, next division will be building. We've got four, excuse me, we have three and a half uh, people in, in the building division. <coughs> Um, we have a permit coordinator whose main job is to take in permits um, and, uh, and deal with all the requirements uh, that have to do with that with that permit, whether it's uh, contractors that are responsible for doing work on those permits, whether it's costing those permits out, uh, dealing with the township assessor, Cook County, um, all, all kinds of things uh, to do with permits. And that would be uh, accepting the permits, closing out the permits, uh, issuing uh, final uh, temporary and final occupancies. Um, the building division, uh, represented by two and a half inspectors. When I say half, we have a part-time plumbing inspector. Uh, these guys do all the inspections in the village relative to buildings. Um, structural, electrical, plumbing, they're in there all the time. Uh, they're on call, um, whether it's scheduled or unscheduled, you know, typically they're scheduled. But we have um, a lot of uh, varied um, types of buildings in town, we have a large industrial base. So we have uh, uh, complicated issues that, that arise and some are really simple and some are complicated. Um, 2000, uh, we do permit review as well and that would be reviewing of plans. Uh, 2012 we did 804 uh, permit reviews and we also have a building consultant that does our more complicated building reviews. Anything to do with a, a new building, anything to do with structural uh, rehab, we send those out and the, uh, the developer or the, uh, the property owner pays for those reviews. We also do business license review. Any business that is getting a new business license, uh, we have our inspectors go out and make sure the property is conforming to our codes for the most part. We can't um, you know, check every item, uh, particularly inside the building, but on the exterior, make sure that they're complying with basic codes. We also do, uh, or the building division also does uh, site inspections um, and additional tasks such as uh, helping property maintenance, uh, helping the grease basin program, which is making sure the grease basins in town are working correctly and are installed correctly, as well as pre-construction meetings. Clerical, uh, we've got three people doing clerical. Um, this is a... Uh, wide-ranging uh, support service for the department, um, data entry, uh, working the desk, um, collecting fees, scheduling the, the inspectors, um, really all kinds of stuff um, that is, uh, some is easy, some is complicated. Processing of signed permits, commission dockets, that sort of thing. We also do uh, the business licenses. This is uh, uh, constantly uh, 
changing program that um, keeping track of new businesses, keeping track of, uh, of businesses that are uh, up for reissuement every year, elevator inspections, uh, helping the rental um, uh, program, and uh, CRS, which is our uh, reporting for uh, flooding. The health uh, department. This is one and a half um, people um, taking care of all sorts of uh, parts of the village that um, restaurants, uh, motels, hotels, but also <coughs> situations where uh, we have residential situations which are non-sanitary. Um, these uh, uh, employees are, are on call sometimes after hours when we have situations that maybe the social services find up, find or police and need to go to a, to an apartment and uh, make a determination whether or not there, there should be occupancy. Uh, they also uh, organize the, the Board of Health, uh, the blood drives, the pharmaceutical and sharps programs, and they also do uh, building plan reviews when uh, we have new uh, <coughs> restaurants in particular uh, come in town. Um, as you can see, these, these photographs, sometimes we have problems in our restaurants, sometimes we have problems in, our, in some of the homes in, in, uh, in town. Uh, we need to uh, be very careful how we deal with some of these issues, um, but we do get through them. Um, dealing with Cook County, dealing with uh, the State Health Department, and as I said previously, uh, police and fire. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, lot, lot of uh, work with them. Property maintenance. Um, this is uh, one full-time inspector, and then we have two, um, I would say part-time, but um, we have uh, one of our municipal inspectors spends half the time doing municipal and half the time doing the rental program. And the, the, the health inspector, one of the health inspectors, uh, does uh, spends half the time doing health and half the time doing property maintenance as well. Uh, there's a wide range of issues in, in the village. I'm sure you guys uh, you know, all are very familiar with this. This is uh, one of the toughest uh, jobs that we have in the village. Um, keeping track of, uh, of buildings being maintained, properties being maintained, um, litter, complaints from people. It's not just complaints from uh, people who have, uh, have their own uh, issues, but they, you know, they've got neighbors that have issues. Um, a lot of negotiation, um, and I think our people do a really good job, uh, but it's, it's not easy. We also do uh, the property maintenance on industrial sites, as the, the photograph shows here. Sometimes we have uh, situations where the contractors or the owners of property uh, dump on property or they locate stuff on a property that shouldn't be there. So our guys have got to go out there, they got to talk to these people and uh, try to get resolution. You can see how many, uh, how many complaints we had in 2012, over 1,500 complaints, 3,500 inspections. I mean, they're out there all the time, um, and it's, uh, it's a tough job. Uh, we have a separate rental, pro a rental program. Uh, this takes up the time of, we have a full-time person, uh, but the half the time is spent on property maintenance, and the other half is on this, uh, this rental uh, program. Um, this is a, another uh, situation where um, there's a lot of uh, negotiation that needs to be done with, with property owners and uh, in the maintenance, as well as the, uh, the renters themselves. Um, we've got a lot of rental in town. Um, some of it um, is not taking care, taking care of very well, and some of it is. Um, we have a three-tier licensing program, so uh, depending on how the, the units are when we inspect them, they either get a one, two, or three-year license. Um, you can see how much the, how the program has grown in the, in the past few years. We started off with 215 single-family. We're now up to 765 single-family being rented. Um, in 2012, um, <coughs> we inspected 1,300 units in, uh, in 900 buildings. The revenue was $34,000. Engineering and capital projects, um, they're, they're similar. Um, I put them together to t talk about, but they're really separate. Um, but the village engineer is, um, is in charge of the CIP program. Um, the engineering and CIP um, has to do with all the um, construction in the village outside the buildings. Um, any sort of uh, land use or uh, land uh, forming, any sort of uh, work on, um, on uh, detention basins, uh, grading, roadways, 
um, the CIP projects themselves, which is a ten million, approximately ten million dollars per year uh, program of taking care of the infrastructure in the village. Um, they issue all the permits, review the permits, and do the project management. Uh, we do have and we do hire out engineering uh, consultants for uh, a lot of our project management as well as design. Uh, that's one of the things that we've done in the past few years to help keep down um, our own um, personnel costs and try to get more efficient. I think we've, we've done that to a more or less extent. Uh, we also manage uh, the CRS program through these departments. Um, and like I said, uh, we do the, the management of the engineering and the, uh, the CIP in particular. Um, hopefully this year we're going to get done um, over 6,000 linear feet of roadway. Actually, it's more like 10,000 linear feet. Uh, outside of these, uh, we do also do special projects uh, when requested. Um, police department renovation projects and uh, the plaza at Dundee and Milwaukee are two of the projects that, um, for example, that we've uh, done, undertaken and uh, managed. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Janik. It's very difficult to put all that information into two short, concise presentations, but I, I think both were very well done and I hope they were informative. Um, next up, we will have the fire department in June. Uh, we wanted to do these quarterly starting on the previous month's workshop, but that workshop was canceled for Passover, so we're a month behind. So in June, we will present the fire department at, I'm sure, great length, uh, <laughs> but I... <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm sure you will find that all very interesting to see how the organization functions and answer some, some questions that we hear uh, over and over again about why we do what we do. And I, I hope that tonight's presentations also address some of those concerns. So thank you. Thank you. Official communication, Clerk Simpson. Uh, the Willing Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association is going to have their annual spaghetti dinner at Wapagetti's at 208 McHenry Road on Sunday, April 28th from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. The tickets are, date, are $8 and they include all-you-can-eat cheese, sausage, or pepperoni pizza or spaghetti dinner with homemade sauce, salad, and garlic bread. The WCPAAA is not a non-for-profit organization that raises funds to purchase necessary equipment for the Wheeling Police Department that is not available through the village, such as a safety vest when fully loaded weighs 50 pounds. Tickets can be purchased at MB Financial at 125 McHenry Road in Wheeling for $8, or you can pay at the door. And kids under five eat free. Thank you. Do you have another official community? Trustee of yours. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. The Village Board would like Clerk Simpson to read something for the record. Proclamation, please. It better not be what I think it is. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll get up. No, you're not. Yes, I will. I'll sit on you. Judy Abrascato Day, <laughs> May 6, 2013. Judy Abrascato. Abascado has served on the Board of Trustees of the Village of Wheeling since 1987, most recently as Village President. During her time on the Board of Trustees, Judy Abascado has worked consistently to assure that the Village of Wheeling provides all its residents and businesses with high quality public service and treats all, of its, all its citizens and stakeholders with dignity and fairness. Judy Ibrascato has been instrumental in promoting diversity and mutual respect in our community and has helped to safeguard the delivery of essential services to all citizens, regardless of their social, economic, racial, or ethnic background. Judy Ibrascato's good judgment and civic engagement have benefited Wheeling and the broader region in a number of capacities. Through her service, not only on the Board of Trustees, but also with organizations such as the Wheeling High School Parent Teacher Organization, the Wheeling High School Instrumental League, the Wheeling Lioness Club, the Wheeling Rotary Club, Wheeling Prospect Heights Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Wheeling Garden Club, the Wheeling Historical Society, and, Wheeling, and the Wheeling Senior Center Foundation. Judy Abrascato's contributions to the community have been formally recognized on numerous occasions, including being named an Illinois Woman of Achievement by the General Assembly of the State of Illinois, 
earning her the Wheeling Senior Commission Award for Outstanding Volunteer Service and receiving the Wheeling High School Band Recognition Award for her generous support and ongoing dedication. After 26 years, Judy Abrascato's tenure and the Board of Trustees has come to an end. The Board of Trustees of the Village of Wheeling do hereby proclaim May 6, 2013 as Judy Abrascato Day in the Village of Wheeling and encourage all members of our community to extend thanks to Judy Abrascato for her dedicated service and to wish her well in her future endeavors. Thank you. tell you something. I told them I didn't want this. <laughs> That's why we did it. I know. But they never listened to you anyway. Uh, I was going to say something at the end when I hit my gavel for the last time. But you know, look how lucky I've been. And all the people that I've met. And that's what it's all about. What you give back to your community. You don't do it for yourself. Because you have 38 or 40,000 people to worry about. You do it because you want to make this a good town. This is the best place to live. I've been here for 46 years, do we figure? 46 years. It's been my privilege to give to you, and not for what you can give to me, but what I can give to you. And may God bless you all. Madam President, before you recess into executive session, the Village Board and the staff unanimously are now calling the executive session room the Abrascato Executive Session Room starting tonight. So I welcome everybody after the meeting to look at the plaque that we have displayed already, and that will live on forever. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the build Bills for April 11th through April 17th. So moved. Motion made by Trustee Adjir, second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. Trustee Adjiris? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hyde? Yes. President Abrascato? Thank you. Board needs to go into executive session to discuss the purchase or lease of property by the village. Pending probable and or intimate litigation, the approval, appointment, employment, compensation, dis discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employee or employees of the village. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion Second. made by Trustee Brady. Second by Trustee Here. Roll call, please. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Here? Yes. Trustee Argeris? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Abascada? Yes. The board will go into executive session at 8.15. And as I gavel this down, this will be the last time I will say goodbye to you and hope we meet again.